After a shaky start, Scott Cooper has turned into one of the best scriptwriters and directors, filmmakers in general, in Hollywood. His latest, however, misses the mark. Cinematic class is about to begin, and the professor is in. Ladies and gentlemen, I had the opportunity to interview Scott Cooper when he was uh, starting his Hollywood run. He had just made Crazy Heart with Jeff Bridges. And since then, he has made some really excellent films. His latest, however, slips just a bit. It appears to be an apology written to American Indians. And while the story takes place in 1892, the arguments that Scott uses in his script are the arguments that people use in modern times today. It doesn't mesh because it's obvious that people back in 1892 were not making uh, these types of arguments. And when they do, boy, it just doesn't fit. The overall theme of the movie is never judge a man until you've walked a mile in his shoes. And certainly this happens to both antagonist and protagonist in this movie. Cooper has returned to the Old West, the milieu in which he is very comfortable. The acting in this is amazing. You have Christian Bale and Wes Studi. Rosamund Pike is in this, and I'll tell you what, she is one of the finest young actresses on screen. I really enjoy watching her work. And also Ben Foster comes by in this. Boy, he, he's strong, too. And there's some other ones thrown in. It's a good, solid cast. There are a lot of people in Hollywood that like to work with Cooper because they know his work is going to be fairly decent. The story is a, a fighting, an Indian fighting captain has to transport one of his mortal enemies across the Midwest because he's being he's dying of cancer and he needs to be, you know, the government has agreed to bring him back to his people in, in Montana and what have you. And it's, it's a disastrous film. While they're walking miles in each other's shoes to find out what the other is all about, people are dropping around them like flies. I mean, this is like disastrous by the time. It's like watching the Titanic, you know, take bets on who's going to live. The story is good for its visual effects, too. And, you know, I want to read this right off the uh, um, package because I want to make sure I get this right. The cinematography is by Mansonubu Takayaniga. And he does a great job on the cinematography. You know, Westerns tend to lend themselves toward big vista shots, but they are excellent in this film, and they're used frequently, and it really gives a, a kind of nice epic gravitas to the whole uh, to the whole visual facade. Hostiles is not of the quality that, that, that Scott Cooper usually does. Usually he's savvy enough not to kind of mix metaphors, if you will, with the time period of 1892 and, of course, 2017. But he does it in this movie, and every time he does it, it's not done because there's been some kind of a buildup that makes sense. It's just kind of thrown in there, and you could see the culture clash between the time periods. It's good for a view but I don't think I would sit through this one again, even though Rosamund Pike is in it. You might want to check it out for one time, and certainly those of you who uh, feel that there is a plight that the American Indians are going through will probably find some value in this movie at all. I'll have some extra behind-the-scenes footage on this when you watch my take on Hostiles on the award-winning and longest-running Film review show in the tri-state area. Outtakes with Fiore on three different cable systems. That's something another show can't brag about. Verizon, Vios, Comcast, and Atlantic Broadband. Be sure to check your listings for the days and the times. Now that you have learned what you have learned, here endeth your lesson.